This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name. This world could never satisfy the longing in my soul when all is lost and hope is dry when all i feel is cold i'm coming back to your presence i'm coming back to your presence
So thankful God redeemed us. So thankful he shed his blood for us. It's exciting to know that we are redeemed. So everybody, let's say so. Let's stand up and say, I am redeemed. Thank you, Lord. that he has redeemed us, set us free by the blood of the Lamb, and we have a reason to rejoice. We have a reason to magnify the Lord today. So let the redeemed say so. 
Uh, we're thankful again for this opportunity to gather together at, from our homes to worship together. And we're so glad that you are a part of the worship experience uh, today. I do want to mention a couple of things to you by way of announcement. And that is on Wednesdays at 645, we begin with uh, Kids Church and uh, Sister Martin does that. Follow, we go right into Bible study and worship at 7 o'clock. So again, on Wednesday night, you can join us via the live stream again, 645, right into 7 o'clock as we explore, explore the Word of the Lord together. So be a part of that. We would love to share with you during that time. Throughout the week, we are praying for you and for the situations that you have we're praying for our elders, our prime timers, that God will keep his hand upon them. And if you have needs or situations that you need us to help you with, supplies, please let us know. We want to make sure that you're well taken care of. And I appreciate uh, some that are already helping you, and we thank them for doing so. Uh, in relation to our elders, we're praying for them, praying for Sister Malili and her son, and uh, asking God for a healing touch in their home. Continue to pray for Brother Raymond, that God would touch him and be with him, Brother Mike, and uh, so many of our friends that need a touch of healing. We're asking God to continue to minister to you, Sister Michelle, and many others. Uh, God is faithful to us. God's going to bring us through. I believe that when this is said and done, that the church will continue to be a witness and a testimony to the strength and the abilities of God on our behalf. So what I want us to do right now, and all through uh, your homes, if you would just take a moment to gather, um, perhaps get your kids close together. We're going to pray right now, and it'd be good for us to pray together, touch God together, and just ask His blessings upon our families, and upon our homes, and upon our prayer requests. Let us pray. Jesus, I want to thank you for this opportunity to call on your name. It's a name that's above every name. I thank you for every time that you've heard us when we've prayed. As a matter of fact, your name is a name that heaven must receive. I know that you hear us when we pray. I know that we're not alone. I know that we are not isolated away from God. Lord, you're right there with us. You're in our homes with us. To our elders that may feel like they're all alone, I, I ask you, Lord, that you let them know that they're not, that you would show your presence to them and your strength, that you would wrap them in your arms and your warm embrace. I'm praying for healing for those that are in need of a touch of healing today. I pray that the hand of the Lord would rest upon all of them, raise them up and strengthen them. I pray also, Lord, for our community, for our state, for our nation, for our world. God, that the hand of the Lord would move upon the earth during this time. During these challenging, difficult times, I pray for a move of the Holy Ghost. I pray that you would touch our missionaries, Lord, and in various places under a great duress. I pray for them, the strength, the help, and the anointing of God. I pray for our leaders, God, that you would give them the wisdom to make the right decisions in relation to this time. We pray, God, for healing. I know that you're able, Lord, to eradicate this virus. I know you're able to move it. And if you don't, I know there's a purpose in that. I pray that you would help the doctors, Lord, with vaccines. I pray that healing would flow. I pray that you would move in all of these situations. And we're here to give you glory and honor and praise. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. I've already received some pictures from others that are worshiping this morning with their kids, even with their dogs close by. So let's just have, continue to have a great time as we magnify the Lord. Let me also mention, by way of giving, that as we prepare to give, I'm thankful uh, to bring my tithe and offering unto the Lord. And I, I have the benefit of being able to place it in the box in the foyer where we put our offering and our tithing. And we ask you to be faithful to give. There are a couple of ways that you can give. You can give online. And uh, we appreciate you doing so at myhopecentral.org. And you go to uh, the give option and you can give. And again, that is the same as the kiosk and others that give in various ways. We appreciate you being faithful to give. Others mail their money to the church. You can do that. 14754 Frenchtown Road, Central Louisiana. And just send it to Hope Central. We appreciate you being faithful to give. And we appreciate the blessings of the Lord. I'm glad I've got a little extra tithe to give today. 
because of the stimulus check. So mine is a little bigger today, and I thank God for that. So as you give, we pray God's blessings upon you, that God would be with you and minister to you in every way. We love you. We thank God for you. Let's continue to have church. God bless.
any battles that we're facing right now, to trust in God and to worship Him. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, 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 again. This is how I fight my battles. I worship you, Lord. Praise your name. This is how I fight my in worship join us in worship hallelujah this is how we fight our battles by worshiping the Lord 
The song says it may look like I'm surrounded. You may feel like you're surrounded, even by the virus and other things, but please understand, it may look like you're surrounded, but we're surrounded by God. God is greater than everything we're facing. God is greater than everything we're dealing with. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the virus cannot stand against the power of God. Your problem cannot stand against the power of God. So understand right now that you are surrounded, but you are surrounded by God. I, I want us to do that course one more time. I'm sorry, I should have told you. I want us to do that course one more time. And I appreciate um, our singers. We have a crew of, crew of ten, seven up here, me, eight, Glenn, and Noah in the back doing the sound. I applaud them. I appreciate them. I just feel like I'm in church right now. And I am in church, and I hope you feel like you're in church. I want us to sing that chorus again. Uh, if you feel like you're surrounded, you're surrounded by God. Let's give Him praise. Let's worship Him. Let's magnify Him. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. and praise Him. Let's thank the Lord that He fights our battles for us. We are not defeated. We are victorious in Him. We are victorious in Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you to our singers and musicians. Thank them for, for their assistance. Always doing a great job. We're going to turn to the word of the Lord in just a moment, but first I wanted to welcome some others that are watching and have sent a few pictures. I have uh, Luke watching with his dog, and uh, we're glad that he's a part of the worship experience this morning, or they are. So you can bring your dogs, your pets, it's time for them to have church with us. Uh, also, the Laurent family, we've got more of, of them check that out just getting into it God bless them and also the Astons look at the Astons man they are prepared worshiping God bless them and God bless all of you 
and thank you for being a part of the worship experience today. I'm going to turn your attention to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 beginning at verse 3. We thank God for his word. We thank God for your being receptive to the word. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. He says people have scoffed about the coming of the Lord. But he said it's, it's going to happen. Don't be ignorant of this. We live certainly in end times. So one could validate that by saying ever since Israel became a nation in 1948, we have been living in the end time, scripturally speaking. And we don't know what tomorrow holds, but... Thank God we do know the promises of God. But verse 8, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Let's focus on verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. Again, speaking of the promise of His coming. That is specifically in context what this verse is speaking of. He is not slack concerning his promise that he's coming. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The Lord will come again. It's a promise. I've often said in using this scripture that the reason that he has not. I don't believe from those that I've listened to and studied that may, have made that there are reasons why he could not come now. But the reason he has not, according to this scripture, is because he's long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish. Perhaps as the angel's getting ready to sound the horn, the Lord would say, wait, there's some more praying. There's some more turning. There's some more repenting. We're going to wait longer. We might be in that waiting stage right now where the Lord is waiting for prodigals and our lost loved ones and friends to come to Him. This season could be a great day of revival. It could be a great day of opportunity where people come to know the Lord. I want to preach for a few minutes with you on this thought. Where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Amen. God bless you at home. You may be seated. Gather your families together. Let's check the word of the Lord. Where there is a will, there's a way. In relation to this scripture, the Bible says the Lord is not willing <clears throat> that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So I would say the will of God is that we all come to repentance. God does not have pleasure in the death of the wicked, 
Ezekiel tells us he does not rejoice in the death of the wicked. And although you read the prophets and you see judgment, can I tell you, in judgment, it's always overcome by grace and mercy. Mercy rejoices against judgment. God's preference is that people repent and turn to him. God does not want to pour out wrath and judgment. God wants to pour out grace and mercy. But because people will not receive it, of course, judgment must come. But how about me? How about you? How about our lives? Why don't we just go ahead and give ourselves to God now? Why don't we go ahead now and submit to God and allow the mercies to consume our soul? I believe that we all should be thankful for the mercies of God. Mercy rewrote our lives. Mercy redeemed us. Mercy saved us. Thank God for the mercies of God. And when you are in your worst condition, bogged down in the worst sin that you could commit, can I tell you, mercy can still find you. As a matter of fact, it's the will of God that everybody repents. God is not into the predestination of people as some would teach that either you're going to make it or you're not and you're predetermined to do so. He does have a predestined church entity, but not the individual's. It is up to you and I to determine where we go based on our obedience to the Word of God. Here's the thing. God has a will, and that will is for you to be saved. The will of God is for you to be saved. Hear me, everybody. It is not the will of God for you to be lost. It is not the will of God for you to spend eternity without Him. It is the will of God that you be with Him. He died to give life to you. He shed His blood to redeem you unto Himself. Thank God for the mercies of God. I think we ought to praise Him and thank Him for His mercies. I want you to understand that there is a will in God. And that will is that we repent. When Nineveh repented, they were saved. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't, judgment came. There's two types of people in the world. People who repent, people who don't. That's the bottom line. We must be a repentant people because God is looking for people to repent. So let's, let's start with that. The will of God is for you to repent. The, the, the Bible says where I read that the Lord is not slack as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us. We're not willing that any should perish. It is not the will of God for you to perish. It is the will of God that you repent and turn your life to him. So where there's a will, that's the will. The will of God is for you to repent and be saved. That's the will. And where there's a will, guess what? There's a way. There's a way for you to be saved. The will of God is for you to be saved. You might say, well, thank, I'm glad that's his will, but how can I be saved? What can I do? In the Old Testament, God was around them. In the New Testament, in flesh, God was with them. But now, after his ascension and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, can I tell you now, God is in us. Not just around, not just with, but in us. He abides in us through the Holy Ghost. So there, he, the will of God is for you to be, repent and be saved. And where there's that will, there's a way. And by the way, he made the way. Let me change that. Matter of fact, he is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he wants you to enter in through the door that he is. He is the way maker. He is our savior. He is our redeemer. I feel the Holy Ghost preaching this morning. Amen. There's not a lot out there, staff and, and crew. But can I tell you, the Lord is in the house. Angels are in the house. There are people at home worshiping. Come on, let's have church. Thank God the will of God is toward us. And because there is a will, there is a way. He made a way. He didn't say, I just want you to be saved. He said, I'm going to make a way for you to be saved. People had a hard time in the Old Testament because when law was instituted, law could not save anyone. Law was basically a mirror that you could look in and see how degraded you were and how imperfect you were and how far away from God you were. But the law could not save. The law could not redeem. It's just a mirror to show you how far you are from God. As you try to keep the commandments, nobody can keep all of those. You can't do it. And because people failed, there was a, a, a substitution 
process where an animal could, could be brought and be sacrificed for the sins of the people. You'd have to bring an animal, bring a turtle dove, bring a, a, a lamb, uh, sometimes even bring flour. What, what you would bring as a sacrifice unto God, you would offer it to the priest. And the priest would take the animal, put it on the altar, shed the blood, and the, the blood would be the propitiation for your sins, that your sins would be not forgiven but pushed forward. So you have this, this avalanche of sins that are being pushed forward because the blood of animal, even though it doesn't have sin in it, it also does not have efficacy. It does not have the power to forgive. It's only a stopgap measure. All of those animals, those thousands and thousands of animals that were sacrificed in the Old Testament, none of them had the power to forgive. But, what, but, but the Lord said, I have a plan. And because these animals can't do it, and because you can't do it within yourselves, and because you cannot redeem yourself, and because sacrifices can't do the trick, I will come myself. Here's the glorious gospel. God Almighty robed himself in the flesh of a man and came and dwelt among us. Hear me, Jesus is the visible image of an invisible God. And Jesus came to do what the law couldn't do, what you couldn't do. No way could we reach God, so God reached us. No matter how high we would reach, we couldn't attain, we couldn't reach God. And God said, I'm going to come to where you are. Jesus is God coming to us. Do you hear me? Thank God for this gospel. The love of God was so strong that he said, I will wrap servile flesh around me and my spirit entity and I will come and dwell among you and live among you. I will face temptation. I will face trial. I will experience everything that you do. I will sense everything that you sense and I will be the sacrifice. Where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a will, and the will of God is for you to be saved, and the way is Jesus. Where there's a will, there's a way. Thank God for that this morning. I thank God that he made a way. I thank God that he is the way, I should say. The importance of the virgin birth is that the blood of Jesus was pure, unlike the blood of, of everyone else whose blood is tainted by sin. But because of how he was born through the virgin birth, his blood was not defiled. And even though he was tempted like as we are yet without sin, the blood of Jesus remained pure and holy and powerful. And then when Jesus went to the cross and died and shed his blood, that precious, untainted, powerful blood was shed. And thank God the blood was shed not just for them that day, but for us throughout all the days to come. Even the days that we live in now, the blood, let me tell you, the blood has not lost its power. It has not lost its ability. The blood, it still flows, and the blood is still just as powerful as it has ever been. It's as powerful in this moment as it was when it first dropped from the cross. The blood of Jesus is able to redeem you. It's able to forgive you. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. The reason he's the Lamb of God is because he's the animal that the Old Testament animals could not be. His blood was not a stopgap measure. His blood was not blood that would push sin forward. You know what his blood did? His blood cast your sin as far as east from west. His blood eradicated the sin. It no longer exists. It's gone. Thank God for that. So you don't have to bring a sacrifice every year. You don't have to bring an animal. You don't have to bring a turtle dove or a lamb. We just go to the Lord. The blood has been provided. What I want you to understand is this, ladies and gentlemen, that thank God that where there is a will, that is that you repent and be saved, there is a way. That's Jesus. Where there is a will, there is a way. I guess it would be better to say where there is a will, there is the way. Jesus is the way. So he's made it possible. So here it is. As I hurried along in the message this morning, I want you to hear this. The will of God is for you to be saved. He is the way to make it to where you can be. So you say, well, what do I do? What do I do? It's an interesting question, is it not? It's the same question that was asked on the day of Pentecost. 
You see, the day of Pentecost occurred after Jesus had ascended into the heavens, uh, after a resurrection, ascended into the heavens, then he poured out his spirit, the comforter. And on that, in that upper room, the about 120 that received the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, magnifying God, when they received the Spirit of God, <clears throat> the Bible tells us that in their worship, the people on the streets began to notice and they began to mock them. Some criticized them and said, this is crazy. What's going on? Some thought they were crazy. Some thought they were drunk. Peter would stand up and he would preach to them. He preached to them about Jesus. What a brilliant message he preaches as he preaches about Jesus. And he concludes his message by saying this. Therefore let all the house of Israel know that God hath raised this same Jesus whom you crucified. He's made him both Lord and Christ. Thank God for the message that Peter preached. And can I tell you, when he did this, the Bible says they were pricked in their heart. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? That's the question of the ages. That's the question that even comes to us today. There's a will, be saved. There's the way, Jesus. So how do you accept this? What do you do? He said, brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Acts 2 and 38, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repentance, baptism, spirit infilling. I want you to understand that that plan was types and shadows all through the Old Testament. Just a couple I'm going to mention real quickly. First of all, when the, the Israelites were captive in Egyptian bondage, when they were leaving, they put the blood on the doorposts of their homes. The animal had been sacrificed and the blood was placed, and that night they left. Leaving Egypt is like repentance. You're leaving the world. You're repenting. And when they left through repentance, they came to the Red Sea. In the Red Sea, they couldn't part. Uh, they couldn't cross because it wasn't parted until the Lord did part it. And that baptism, the Bible speaks that are we not all baptized or that they were baptized through the Red Sea. So we have leaving Egypt as repentance. We have going through the Red Sea as baptism. And then they entered the land of promise. They went to the promised land. Peter said, the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. So that, that typology, leaving Egypt through the Red Sea to the land of promise, repentance, baptism, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, which the promise is yours. In the tabernacle, in the, in the temple, you have, they would go to first to the altar, the, the brazen altar where the sacrifice was made. Then they would go to the laver where they would wash themselves. Then they would go into the very presence of God where the holiest of holies was, the Ark of the Covenant. Again, you have the, the altar repentance. You have the labor, the washing, baptism. You have the spirit, uh, the, the power of God, the holiest of holies. Repentance, baptism, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. So what I want you to understand, and please hear me, some of you that used to go to church, some of you that got sidetracked because of maybe the church did you wrong or people did you wrong or this happened or that happened or you got caught up in different things that took you away from God. I am telling you right now that wherever you are and whatever you're doing and regardless of where you've been and what you've said and what you've done, that the will of God is for you to be saved and He is the way that makes it happen. Where there is a will, the will of God, there is the way which is Jesus. The intent and purpose of God is for you to be saved. Thank God he has made a way for us to be redeemed and saved. I think that's worthy of praise. I think we ought to thank God. I think we ought to thank God that he made a way. And indeed, he is the way. Death burial, resurrection. Death, burial, resurrection. That is the born again experience that Jesus spoke of. And it is available to you. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth and he said this, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Thank God for that. 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Now look at that verse. Will with the temptation also make a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Come on, someone. Where there's a will, there's a way. He will, with the temptation, make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So I want you to understand there is a way. The will of God, the will in you, that I want to be saved. Where there's a will, there's a way for you to overcome. And in this scripture, it is saying there's no temptation taking you that's greater than the ability of God to save you from it. So this, this is what this tells me. Where there's a will, there's a way for you. There's a way for you to overcome temptation. There's a way for you to overcome trials. There's a way for you to overcome tests. There's a way for you to overcome obstacles. There's a way for you to overcome problems. There's a way for you to overcome setbacks. We are challenged today. We are surrounded. We have things going against us. Our, our economy is chaotic. People are dying. All kinds of things are happening, not just here but around the world. But I am telling you, where there is a will, there is the way. God is going to lead his people through every obstacle, through every challenge. We are not left to our own devices. We are not left without the hand of God. He has not left. He has not abdicated the throne. He is still high and lifted up. He is still God. Let me tell you something. He sees you as you sit by the, at the house by yourself. You might say, I feel so alone. There's nobody here. I beg your pardon. There is somebody there. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. Then he said, I'm going to sit here on this couch with you. Come on, my dear sister. You're not alone. Come on, my brother. You're not alone. Come on, families. You're not alone. God is going to help us through all of these things that we face because where there is a will, there's a way. There's a way. God's going to help us. God's going to help us. God has shown us that he has birthed overcoming power in us. In Revelation, to he that overcometh, you're going to sit with me. To he that overcometh. You know why you overcome? Not because you're so good and powerful and good looking and rich and all that and educated. Let me tell you why you're going to overcome. You're going to overcome because of the blood of the Lamb. And because the blood has been applied to you and you are an overcomer. So I rejoice today. I rejoice today because, Allison, if you'd come, I rejoice because where there's a will, there's a way. And where you are, what you're dealing with, what you're facing, I am telling you, I am telling you, hear me, church, I am telling you that there is a way because the will of God is present. The will of God is for you to be saved. The will of God is is for you to spend eternity with Him. The reason He has paused His coming, and even during this time, I've heard some preachers speak about how this is a precursor, of course, to the coming of the Lord. And it could be, I don't know. But I do know this. I do know this. That every day there's a pause. Every hour there's a pause. Every minute there's a pause. Hear me. Every second there's a pause. It's because of the heart of God toward people. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. He said people have scoffed. People have scoffed for thousands of years. Where's the promise of His coming? It's, it's just like now, like it's always been. Same things happening now, the same things that were happening years ago. Scoffers today would tell you, when you speak about the rapture and the calling away of the church, the scientific and the agnostic and the atheist, they would look at you and say, you're just crazy, believing a fairy tale. It's never happened. But here is the point, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't happen every generation. It happens one time. So it's not like a multiple occurrence where it occurs in this generation or that generation. It's going to occur one time. And I can tell you this without any reservation. We're closer now than we were yesterday. We're closer now than they were thousands of years ago. We still believe the 
return of the Lord for his church the ecclesia the called out ones we still believe that do we not we still believe but here's the thing why hasn't it happened yet I'll tell you why it hasn't happened it hasn't happened because the heart of God is toward us and even though he hears the scoffing he hears the mocking he hears all of those things that are said about him that doesn't deter him from the fact that he wants you to be saved so don't think for a moment the Lord is slack concerning his promise of his return but I will tell you this the reason he has not occurred has not come yet is simply because he's long suffering to usward long suffering hear that he's long suffering to us not willing that any that any should be lost not willing that any should not come to repentance he's long suffering to usward he wants us to repent he wants us to turn to him he's long suffering to usward because he's not willing that any should perish by the way that any that includes you and me includes all of us he's not willing for you to perish he doesn't want you to perish that's why he waits that's why he waits because somewhere right now even through a, a streamed service there are people repenting in their homes there are people that are repenting in their homes. Right now, I'd like for you to, to join me in, in prayer and meditation. I want you to turn your heart to God. If you would just shut out all activity right now at home. If you would just, just, just gather just for a moment. We're about done. But I want you to gather just for a moment in silence and prayer and focus on God. Because I want you to know the reason you're there right now is because the Lord is long-suffering to us. The Lord said, I don't want anybody to die lost. I don't want you to die lost. I don't want to bring judgment. I want to bring mercy. I don't want to bring judgment. I want to bring mercy. In His favor is life. And He wants you to live. God, right now I'm asking you that you administer to everyone listening to this service now or even later. I pray that the anointing would move through the internet. I pray the anointing would move. I pray that people would feel the presence of God and know, Lord, that your heart is toward them. I pray for the backslider, God, that you would touch his heart, her heart, turn him to you. I pray, God, there would be people that would call or text me or reach out to me and say, Pastor, I need to be baptized. I want to be baptized in the precious name of Jesus. I pray, God, that somebody right now would turn their heart to you. I pray, God, that a backslider that has left you would begin to pray right now and say, God, I want that in me. I thank God that the will of God is toward me and for me, not against me. Where there is a will, the will is for you to be saved. There is a way. The way is Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this people, God. I pray for everyone that listens to this service, to this sermon, to this message, to this, this time. I pray that you administer to their hearts and speak to them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a move of your spirit. I pray for a move of your spirit right now, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. We come in the name that's above every name in the name of Jesus. There is a will. There is a way. Thank God for his presence. I want us to worship for a moment together. As you're praying, we thank God. There's not a mountain too tall, and there's not a problem so small that Jesus can't resolve. In time, we'll get involved. Our God, He cares about. 
Lift your praise to Him right now. Wait hallelujah. On the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We wait on you right now, Jesus. Wait. wait. On the Lord. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's long suffering to us. He's long suffering to you. He's long suffering to you. Hallelujah. He wants you to be saved. He made a way for you to be saved. Bless the name He's of Jesus. Ordering. He's ordering your steps. So you've got a way. for joining us we pray that you'd continue to worship and as she continues to play they're going to put the announcements on for you to see again if we can help you let us know if you need us let us know if you're going to be baptized let us know if you need help supplies let us know we appreciate you we love you all we pray the blessings of God would be yours remember you're not alone we're praying for you. And remember, Jesus is right there with you at all times. We love you all. <laughs> 